Hey readers, today we are going to be figuring out the meaning of unknown words that we encounter as we read our independent either memoir or fiction text. So there are a lot of different strategies that you could try if you come across a word that you don't know. So really the first thing that you need to do when you come across a word that you're not sure of what the meaning is, is you need to stop and pause. If you keep reading, you might not understand what comes next if you don't really clarify what that unknown word means to you. So I always say stop first and look around. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna go over some of these different strategies. So the first one is think about what do you picture when you actually read this word? What actually comes to mind? Okay, what else? is happening, what's going on in the text in this particular part where you read the word? Is it a positive word or is it more of a negative word? Okay, you might not be able to tell, but if you are able to, you can think about that. That could help you. Are there any roots or base words that you recognize within this word? So think about all of the work that we've been doing this year with word study. Okay, some of you, most of you have been learning about base words, root words, um, there might be words within the word that could help you. Also, what type of word is it? Is it an action word? Is it an object? Or is it a describing word? And then lastly, ask yourself, are there clues around the word? So you can look before, maybe in a sentence or two before the word that might give you some clues. There might be some clues within the sentence itself or there might even be some clues in the following sentence or two after the word. So it's important that you read all around the word. So as I was reading Marshfield Dreams, I came across a word that I didn't know, actually really in the very beginning, in the very first chapter. So I was reading the first chapter and I came across this word toadstools. So let me just read you the sentence. Some were edible and others were poisonous toadstools. All right, so what I want to try to do is go through these different strategies to see if I can figure out what the meaning of toadstools is. Okay, so we have our anchor chart here to remind us of what are the different strategies that we want to use. Okay, so the first one is what am I picturing? Okay, toadstool. All right, so here's the sentence just in case you need to look at the word again. Toadstool. So uh, honestly, I picture a toad because I can think of what a toad looks like and I can picture a stool like the kind of stool that you sit on. I'm thinking though since Ralph is talking about things that he finds in the woods I don't really know if he's referring to like a toad sitting on a stool but I mean he might find a toad in the woods I don't know about a stool though. So I'm thinking that maybe the word toadstool has a different meaning than the parts than each of the individual words within it. All right, what is happening in the text? So this is where I might have to really go back um, and reread and make sure that I'm understanding what's going on. So in this particular part, he's describing all of these like magical things that he finds in the woods. Um, and he talks about before how he finds all different kinds of mushrooms. So this particular word, toadstools, kind of falls in that in that section where he's describing how he sees a lot of different mushrooms. So that could be important to me. Um, is it a positive word or a negative word? Well, in the sentence itself, it actually calls them poisonous. So I'm thinking that maybe it's more of a negative word. Are there any word parts within the word? So as I mentioned earlier, there's actually two base words put together. So toad stools. But again, I'm thinking that probably the meaning of the word is different than each of those individual meanings separately. Like, I don't think that the word toadstool actually means a toad like is sitting on a stool. I think it might have a different meaning here. What type of word is it? So is it an action? Is it an object or is it a describing word? I think it's an object. All right, and this is important. So are there clues around the word itself? Um, so let me just reread the sentences before and after. <clears throat> so the sentence before says, we found all kinds of mushrooms. Some were edible and others were poisonous toadstools. Mom said to think of them as strangers. Some are good, some are bad, and since you couldn't tell the difference, it was best to leave them alone. 
So by reading the clues around the word, I'm getting more of a feeling that this word toadstools has something to do with mushrooms. I'm thinking it's a type of mushroom. So if I look back at all the different thinking that I did here, um, that I did out loud for you and on this slide, I get a feeling that this might have to do with mushrooms. Okay, so this is where now I go into my reader's notebook. So I did all that thinking, but now I have to put it down somewhere. So I'm going into my digital digital reader's notebook and I go to page one, which is the figuring out the meaning of unknown words page. And I'm just going to start filling in what I can right now. So unknown word toadstool. What is the meaning of the word based on context clues? So based on all of this thinking that I did out loud with you, <clears throat> what do I think it is? So I think it's a type of mushroom. OK, now. I probably have a pretty good idea of what the word means, but I personally think it's important to just check that meaning to make sure that it's accurate. Because again, if you continue on and you don't really have the correct understanding, it might not make sense um, as you read on. So I also want to use reference materials just to kind of double check what the word toadstool means. So I'm thinking it has to do with a mushroom, but it might have more to it than just that. So I'm just going to click on that link and it brings me to Merriam Webster, which is a very popular dictionary. If you want to use another one like dictionary.com, that's fine. And I can just type in toadstool here. I just want to make sure that I'm on the dictionary tab. So I just want to make sure that dictionary is highlighted. All right, so here we go. Toadstool. It's a noun. Okay. So here's the definition a fungus having an umbrella shaped pilus, which I'm not really sure what that is, but kind of in my mind, I'm thinking it's like that cap. And then it says, especially a poisonous or inedible one as distinguished from an edible one. Ah, so it, it definitely does have to be, I think, poisonous in order for it to be a toadstool. It's saying it's, it's inedible and poisonous. So when I go back here and I actually fill in my definition of what I found, I would want to make sure that I include that. So the true definition is a poisonous or an edible fungus having an umbrella shaped pileus or cap. I just wrote cap there. So I kind of put it into my own words. But you can see that doing all of that thinking really made me understand that it is a mushroom. And I did kind of have an idea that it was a poisonous mushroom, too. So when you read, as you read on in your text, you want to make sure that every time you're coming across a word that you don't know, that you're stopping and you're going through all of those different strategies to try to find out the meaning of that word. And then you're putting that into your notebook. If you're reading a book, this is important too. If you're reading a book that you um, are finding no words that you don't know, that's a good indication that that book might be a little bit too easy for you. So you want to make sure that you are coming across some words that you don't know. So you should be reading um, a somewhat challenging text, um, challenging enough that you can get through the page and you understand what's going on. But the rule of thumb typically is that if you use the five finger rule, you should have about like one to two words that you don't know. If you have more than that, like three, four, five words that you don't know, that might be too many for you and the book might be too challenging. If you have no words that you don't know really throughout like most of the book, then you might really need to up the challenging level. And keep in mind, you have the option of really reading whatever book that you want to, as long as it's realistic fiction or a memoir. So if you feel like you need to change your book, I would say now's the time. So this is also a good way to tell whether the book is a just right book for you. All right, readers. So off you go. You're going to start reading your book if you haven't already started and make sure that you're keeping track of those words that are unknown to you in your notebooks.